Hello and welcome to Outlaw Bookseller and hello from the Moomin there, there he is. And he lights up but it's an LED and it won't stretch the PC, it's just silly, it'd be better just to have a regular plug. It is what it is. This video could be called putting the reading in and why you have to do it. But it is really about the fact that if you want to become an expert in science fiction and one of the key things which put me off going on booktube for years was the huge number of people who quite simply haven't got a clue what they're talking about. It's just, you know, wanted to be an influencer and all this stuff. And that's fair enough. And it's a democratic platform. But really, you will never, ever become as expert in SF as you'd like to be if you don't read around the subject as well. You have to read the books. Yes, that's the most important thing, getting the novels and short stories and anthologies under your belt. But it's equally important once you start doing that to start to put a shape on things and get on the same page as the real authorities. And this is how you do it. There are many, many, many SF reference books, academic works, popular works, fanzines, what have you, which you can consult and collect. And I find this a fascinating area and it's, I've been into it since the 1980s. But there is one book above all others. And what you will notice in this video is that I'm not going to show you books with lots of pictures in because any book with pictures in, as good as it is, and recently Richard Rempel at Vintage SF showed the really nice Dorling Kindersley SF Encyclopedia by John Clute. Great book, but any book with pictures in it is going to be compromised because science fiction is fundamentally about words. Fiction is about writing and it's about words. The images are secondary. If you think images are more primary, then really you should be watching films and not reading books because it's books that matter in SF. The written word is where the ideas come from and science fiction is nothing if not the novel of ideas, the writing about ideas in a scientific sense, in our scientific worldview, in our paradigm which is post-enlightenment, post-magic, post-religion, post-superstition. It is about how we think about the world since the enlightenment. There's one book above all others which should be revered, and that is the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction, represented here in its first edition, and I use the term edition here in its correct use, which is about content. Its first edition, edited by Peter Nichols. This is the paperback. There was a hardcover a year before it. When did it come out? It won the Hugo Award. Let's have a look if we can find the printing history, and the printing history is hidden away. But it's the very end of the 1970s. I think it was 79. Let's see. Um, yeah, 79. Yeah, 1979, published by Granada. It had two years in hardcover. This is the first and only paperback printing from 1981, which I bought in the early 80s. So I'm going to pop it there. And as you can see, it's got a Chris Foss cover. And this is the book that you need. OK, now, interestingly, this first edition and by edition, we mean the contents, um, as you see, does have the odd illustration. Of course, now I'm doing that. We're not seeing any of them. But as fun as the illustrations are, there's one of Aldous Huxley. The real point is the text. And as you'll see there, it's six columns across each double page. Very dense. Now, having this alongside you, and I had this alongside me when I was reading SF in the 80s, this made all the difference in the world. There's no internet then, remember? It's made all the difference in the world, and it's still very valid now. I'm going to pop it there. So if you ever see it, pick it up. Now, of course, reference books go out of date, unlike websites which are more easy to update. So then some years later, I think it was 1993, let's just check, there was a revised edition. Peter Nichols was an Australian academic who spent a lot of time in the UK. And um, this is the revised edition from Orbit, the second edition or first revised edition, if you want to call it that. And I bought this when it came out and I looked forward to this for months and months and months. And it's much bigger. It has no illustrations. It is two columns per page. Just to give you an idea of its extent, it is, let me see, 1400 pages long of small type. I've used both editions and still use them ever since. They are the most important non-fiction books I've ever bought and read in my life. John Clute came up as a critic in New Worlds 
and he established himself probably as the world's leading SF critic. He's reviewed so much. He's getting on in years now, but he really, really does know his stuff full stop. So I defer to him even if I don't agree with him always. So there you go. So that's important. A year or two after that came this, the Encyclopedia of Fantasy by Clute and John Grant, which is even bigger and has no illustrations and is wonderful. I still haven't read all of this and I've had it since it came out and it's like 30 years as so I'm less interested in fantasy, but it's absolutely fantastic. There was never any other edition. Now, the thing with this again, because it came out in 93, it's very out of date. However, there is a website called the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction. It is updated regularly. It's now technically in its fourth edition because it became too big to become a book. If you go back 20 years ago, they could have done a CD-ROM. The CD-ROMs were soon superseded by hyperlinks on the internet. So it is there for everybody to look at and you can dig deep and it's updated all the time. And the contributors are the cream of the crop from SF writers, critics and experts worldwide. It is the Ne plus ultra of what you're really talking about. So it is updated. The beauty, however, of the books is that you sit down with one, you look one thing up, there's a cross reference and you're still there three hours later. And this has happened to me so many times and you learn so much. So it doesn't matter what you're doing to really get to level of expertise. You need these to back up your reading of the actual fiction itself and to get you the historical and thematic and contextual thing. They really are quite something. Of course, they're very big and they're not the only things you can do. One day I'll do a video where I take you through every single SF reference book I've got because I've got loads and loads. But just to show you, these are a few I pulled off the shelves. They're hidden behind loads of boxes. And I do have some more important seminal ones somewhere else. I'm not even sure where they are at the moment. But the reason why I wrote my little books, that one and that one, we're trying to boil things down a bit to give an idea of what the genres were in a hundred selected books. They're not tops, they're not best of. So that was the idea. It's out of date now, needs revising, keeps selling. So Bloomsbury won't give me more money to revise it. I'm trying to reclaim the rights of that one and it's taking forever so I can reissue it and focus it a bit more, but we will see. But I just thought I'd show you a few more things which are important to try and pick up. Now, most of these books are quite old and there's a lot less published in hardcover book format than they used to be. There's more online content, of course. The beauty of books is that they are professionally edited and written. Whereas a website, anybody can do anything and it's, you know, it doesn't mean it's accurate. Um, the publisher Xanadu did several of these back in the late 80s, early 90s. The best one they did was David Pringle's um, Science Fiction, The 100 Best Books, which covered up to, from 1948 to 1984. I can't find my copy of here somewhere. This is Fantasy 100 Best Books by Cawthorn and Moorcock. There's also this utterly unputdownable horror 100 Best Books with a forward by Ramsey Campbell. And what this does, it picks 100 books. There's 100 different writers writing about 100 books. It's amazing and really a great, great stuff. So if you ever come across those, pick them up. Yeah, they're out of date, but they're essential because the fact is, is that in genre fiction, genre fiction's development has slowed down enormously since the early 90s. If you look at it between, you know, the, the beginning of the 20th century and the beginning of the 90s, the evolution is so rapid, especially in SF. When you get to SF from 1925, to 1990 it just goes at such a rate and it's just slowed down since then that's the fact of it you only have to look at the material books by sf writers are always worth picking up and this is a great one norman spinrad's um science fiction in the real world i reread this a while ago for the first time in ages i've shown it on the channel i know this had a bigger impact on me than i realized it's also important to get life stories where you can. That's one of Brian Aldiss's three autobiographies, Bury My Heart to W.H. Smith. So if you come across these things, read them as well, because you get an insight into what SF writers' lives are really like.
really incisive critics like Tom Dish. This is his book, The Dreams Our Stuff Is Made Of, How Science Fiction Conquered the World. Marvellous. This is a book length interview with Michael Moorcock conducted by Colin Greenland. Death is No Obstacle. It tells you all about how he writes fantasy and SF novels. That was amazing. Another Tom Dish book. There we go on SF and it says piles of these things. Then you get, you know, you get a good, um, good history about Roberts. Probably the best history of SF is Billion Years, Billion Years Spree, AKA Trillion Years Spree by Brian Aldiss, which first was issued in the early seventies, then reissued about 86. Adam's one is more up to date. This is the first edition of Adam's book. It is now revised and expanded and it's fantastic. That's in Paul Grave. The paperback of the second edition is relatively cheap. It's print on demand. Essential stuff. I haven't upgraded yet, but I will. That's the hardcover first. And you know, if you really want to dig into it, you know, there's more specialized stuff up there. This is the stuff I really love. This is a Greenwood Press book by Nicholas Ruddick ultimate island on the nature of British science fiction and this is sort of really hardcore. So this really is just to give you an idea of the kind of thing you can delve into to improve your understanding and enhance your enjoyment of SF. And the strange thing is anti-intellectualism even exists in science fiction. In fact, there's an entry in the SF encyclopedia on anti-intellectualism in science fiction, which has always baffled me. The real point is this. If you want to see it as more than escapism, more than Reagans and spaceships, if you want to see its real significance as literature and the way that SF reflects our times in the modern and postmodern world like nothing else, you have to do this sort of reading. It'll take your head off and it really enhances the enjoyment of reading science fiction. So do try and build yourself a library of these sort of things. Buy them whenever you come across them. Some of them are hard to read, some are easy to read. The essential volume above all others is this one. And as I say, the best thing to do when buying SF reference books is to avoid the ones with the pictures in them, because as nice as they are, they're in the way of the words. That's my take on it. This is Outlaw Bookseller signing out for now. See you again soon. Bye.